Hey guys, it's Dave here. Thanks for tuning in. Today I just wanted to talk a little bit about my own stock portfolio, what I'm thinking about doing, how I'm thinking about the markets right now. Obviously my Rocket Lab stock, and I did buy some more recently, so just going to share that trade with you as I always share all my moves on stocks that I talk about on the channel. And uh, what I'm really thinking about for the future, I'm really wrestling with some difficult decisions here. Uh, welcome any input or just your thoughts about what you're doing. Just really struggling to decide um, how much more money I want to invest in Rocket Lab because that would mean selling other stocks and the implications that go along with that. Uh, like to hear your perspectives on how much you are willing to hold in one company, especially if that company can be risky, even if you have a pretty high conviction in it and you do believe that it'll have a very good return. So uh, let's dive into it. Uh, first off, I'm just sharing a tweet here to illustrate a point. This is kind of one of my bigger fears around talking about investing on YouTube. I love to do it. I love to have these discussions with you guys, especially in the Discord and in the comments. But um, what my big fear is, is that I'll make a mistake, which is, you know, I'm human, mistakes happen, and I am completely comfortable making mistakes and bearing the consequences to my own portfolio of my mistakes. But what I'm not very comfortable with is other people just copying me, and then if I make a mistake, um, they'll think it's all my fault. So this is uh, Tom Nash here. He's another YouTuber, very, very popular guy, runs a huge channel. I don't know if you've heard of him. You're welcome to check him out. Uh, one of the stocks he's covered a lot in detail is Palantir. And he's obviously extremely bullish on Palantir, has been for a couple years, and Palantir has had a horrible year or so. So uh, someone tweeted at him and just said, I'm down $50,000 on my Palantir. Thanks a lot, Tom. And uh, obviously it's a little funny, the joking, oh, you're most welcome, feels good to be appreciated, haha. <laughs> but um, even though it's kind of funny on the face of it, this is kind of what scares me is that people will... Uh, you know, blame me if I make the mistake and not do their own research. So first off, just a quick uh, reminder, you know, you're, you're responsible for all your own investment decisions. I'm not telling you what to do. And uh, you should probably do further research on your stocks, not just solely rely on my videos. Um, because I am human and I do make mistakes. So that being said, I just wanted to talk a little about, well, first of all, my recent move. So pretty small move recently, but I did add about uh, 563 shares of Rocket Lab, which was, I know, a pretty small amount, but... Uh, as I said, I don't have a lot of free cash these days. Every time I buy it, I'm selling something else. So I, I, I really want more. And the past week or so, I've been thinking a lot about Rocket Lab and how much I want to buy. And I have been wanting to buy more, even though I previously got it at a cheaper price than it's trading at today. I still just don't want to miss out on what I think is potentially a huge opportunity for future growth. I've said before, I feel like it could be a uh, 6x in the next several years. So then I started thinking, well, maybe I should just buy a lot more and really try to capitalize on this. Um, I actually got a little too cute with it the other day. Uh, a couple days after this, I was going to buy more. I was about to buy more on, might have been the Wednesday, I think it was. And... Um, I thought, oh, let's wait. I think it's going to drop a little lower. And then what happened? There was a, an upgrade from a analyst firm. I forget the firm off the top of my head right now, but obviously the stop drunk jumped on that upgrade and uh, I didn't end up buying. That's just the danger of trying to be too perfect and too cute, getting the best price you can. I'm sure we've all been there before. Let me know if you have a story of trying to buy a company at uh, just a little bit of a better price and then you end up not getting it at all because it just jumps up. Uh, happens to all of us and it's always extremely painful when it does. So that's uh, that's my thought process on just trying to buy it as I can right now. So this brings my total shares up to 6,716. My cost basis is now almost 31,000 on the stock and I'm currently up about 5,000, which is nice. Although, um, of course, that's peanuts until compared to what I think it will do in the future. 
So if you're uh, keeping track against me out there trying to have a little competition, uh, that's where I stand right now. The other thing about Rocket Lab is that it seems like it's kind of showing some strength lately. It's over the past year plus, it's really shown a lot of weakness compared to say the S&P or, you know, basically anything. Of course, um, a lot of these space stocks have, a lot of these companies that are not yet profitable have been really hammered hard. But although the past week or two, we've started to see more drops, Rocket Lab has held up decently well, in my opinion, uh, better than some of these other companies for sure. So to me, I'm thinking we probably won't see the threes again, and I, I don't think I should try and wait and get in more you know, in the high threes, because I just don't think that's going to happen. Even if the overall markets hit the lows that we previously hit, even if they test those bottoms again, I personally kind of don't think that Rocket Lab will get down there. So um, uh, I'm really wanting to buy more shares if I can in the fours, because uh, as I said, I've been thinking about it and I just really, I don't want to miss out on the opportunity. So yeah, as I've been thinking about the future and the stock, um, if it does six X from here, going by my current share count of, you know, 6,700, that could turn into 216,000. But you know, if, if I up that share count to 10,000 shares, that would turn into 318,000. These are all American dollars, by the way. And if I go all the way up to 15,000 shares, which is a lot of money for me today, um, that could potentially turn into $477,000 if I am right about where this company could be going. Um, and obviously it continues depending on how much money you add. Just a quick break to say if you're enjoying the video, if you like the content I make, please hit like and subscribe down below to help out the channel and continue to help us grow. There's also a link to my Discord community down below, or I should say our Discord community because I really don't consider it to be mine or the people that make it and not just me. Um, but uh, yeah, some great discussions go on there as well as my Twitter down below. Everything you can do to help out the channel is greatly appreciated. Now let's continue on with the discussion their own impacts like I, I may incur taxes those things i'm selling may you know do have good performance in the future and just how risky do i want to play it do do I, I i do like to keep a bit of diversification past i always tried to keep my growth uh speculative stocks into kind of a smaller basket but my goal here is really uh financial independence so i can you know, not work if I don't want to, I can travel more, I can basically do whatever I want and not have to worry. It doesn't mean not working, but it means like, you know, you de-stress your, your work situation. If you lose your job, it's fine. You'll be fine financially. You can do what you want or you can pr pursue a job what that you want to do regardless of the money. Maybe you want to do something that actually pays less so I could do that. Anyway, that's kind of the goal and where I'm coming from on this. So obviously the bigger numbers will get me closer and closer to this goal. Uh, the downside being if I'm wrong, and it, it is a risky stock, by the way, in that it's not yet profitable. So there's always things that can go wrong for sure, especially with rocket companies. Rockets have a tendency to blow up or go wrong, <laughs> just kind of the nature of the business, although Rocket Lab has a great track record on that. Um, so I'm really just wrestling with this idea of trying to figure out exactly how much more money I should put in to this company while also still managing the risk, um, keeping my portfolio diversified and holding my, my safe stocks. So uh, what I'm looking at is, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I was actually looking at selling my Apple shares recently and potentially buying into Rocket Lab. Now, uh, when I originally got Apple, this isn't my true cost basis, by the way, this is the cost basis that came with me um, as of when I moved to this broker. So I actually bought Apple ages ago, my cost basis is much lower than this, which means I might have to pay taxes. And also, um, Apple's kind of just a company that I felt like I could hold forever, you know? They're always going to sell a ton of iPhones. They seem to consistently perform pretty well. And uh, it's one of those names that I think uh, is just continues to grow. I mean, it's the biggest company in the world right now by market cap. So, so there's that. Um, thinking i can't believe it but i was thinking about potentially selling this i still might in the coming days especially if rocket lab drops back down into the force um, some other names i could sell now these are all index fund etfs that i 
was never really planning to touch. Um, it's the what I call the safe half of my portfolio, just kind of tracks the overall market, the, the couch potato style that I, I um, originally started off with in investing. Um, so I've got a bunch of small ETFs positions that I, I do want to kind of consolidate, but th these are some bigger ones, and as well as VEQT, uh, and just some other names that track the whole market. But then I do have to admit, during the past year and a half or so, while the stock market has been tumbling like crazy, especially growth stocks. It's been extremely comforting to have these names in my portfolio. They've obviously still gone down with the overall markets, but they've gone down way less than a lot of the names like Rocket Lab, like uh, Palantir, for example, or just any of these growth companies that are not yet profitable that have absolutely got hammered. You know, some of these companies are down 90% plus. I know Rocket Lab used to be... Um, way above ten dollars per share they i think it hit 20 briefly maybe 17 and and now we we've gone all the way down to five so um it's been painful and and this has really been like my saving grace during this time so do i really want to get rid of that um that backup that saving grace uh that comfort side of the portfolio that i can always count on to um be there uh i don't know um trying to decide trying to decide how aggressive I want to be and pursue my goals versus being safe and uh, playing it for the long run. Still trying to figure it out, but I do think in the coming days I will be adding some more shares, just trying to decide uh, what kind of scenario here I'm comfortable with going to. It might very well be this one. You know, I might take a big bet because uh, I think it'll pay off, but uh, definitely still have to decide. Let me know uh, how much are you willing to put into one stock in your portfolio, even if you have a high degree of confidence in it. I assume it's not 100%, although I do know, know some people who've gone basically all in on one stock. can either go very well or very poorly. Uh, you can end up like this gentleman here. That could be his entire net worth, that $50,000. Or you could be like one of those uh, millionaires out there who went all in on a big winner and... Uh, really paid off for them. So that's the risk and the debate. The other thing to think about here is the tax implications. Some of these funds I've been holding for years, maybe since 2016, 2018. So uh, obviously there have been pretty solid gains since then, despite the recent pullback. If I sell these, I will have to pay taxes on them. Now I have sold some stocks for a loss recently to capture those losses and perhaps offset some of these gains, but you really have to think about how much taxes are you going to pay if you sell this and is it worth it to pay those taxes in order to move to a stock you think may potentially grow faster. In terms of the overall markets, it kind of does seem like we're, we're heading towards retesting those previous lows. Um, we've got quantitative tightening coming up. The Fed has said they're going to continue to raise rates aggressively as they need to, to handle inflation. Thank you, Teddy. <laughs> on the uh, on the other hand, Rocket Lab is showing some relative strength, so I don't think it's going to drop back down to its former lows, even if the overall markets drop down to their former lows. Um, that's just my opinion. We might not get down to those previous levels. We might even break through. Personally, I don't think we'll break through. I kind of hit, think we've hit the lows, but I could be wrong. As I've said, I've been wrong many times. Um, that's it for today. Just a quick discussion video. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.